Hi, welcome to the Digital Marketing Success Stories podcast. I'm your host, Wes Kramer, and I'm joined by David Summerfleck. Um, we're really grateful and excited to have him on the program today. Uh, David is a digital marketer, ex digital marketing expert, pardon me, with over 20 years of experience working as a project manager for marketing agencies across the United States. David has written for AOL Time Warner, spoken to Microsoft to standing room only crowds, keynoted the city and county of Denver's Create Expo, and worked with hundreds of small to medium businesses, business owners, pardon me, <laughs> um, startup founders and service providers across the globe. David's also taught workshops on nonprofit marketing, startup lean management, WordPress, SEO, e-commerce marketing, and has authored The Road to Digital Marketing Profits, now available through Amazon, Walmart, Barnes & Noble, and Books A Million. David, thank you so much for coming on the show. Welcome to the pro program Digital Marketing Success Stories. Um, please uh, say hello, and I'd love to hear about your journey to digital marketing and uh, how you got started, and then we can maybe dive in and do a little bit of uh, meat and potatoes and uh, learn some of something about this uh, topic from you. Well, sure. Thank you for having me on, West. I appreciate your time. I appreciate the time of anybody listening uh, to this as well. I hope I can impart some, you know, actionable advice to everybody listening to really uh, light a fire underneath their fundaments, so to speak. <laughs> so, um, where do we begin? My own background is. Basically, I went to college um, studying to get a degree in English. My goal was to be a writer. So I was studying Shakespeare and Ch Chaucer and Keats and medieval journalism and the, you know, the craft of fiction and poetry and nonfiction, essay writing and so on. So I was going to college for that. And, you know, obviously in college, you want to get internships because it can help you pay for your books or the, the courses, uh, you know, depending on the, the internship. So I wanted to work as many internships as I could. Mm -hmm. And so I started interning at different newspapers and publishers, uh, you know, e either to get, you know, uh, money for books or to cover course expense. And so I started learning very quickly that where I lived geographically, the jobs for writers and editors and copywriters, there just weren't that many of them back then. And the pay was pretty low unless you had a master's or you were dating somebody who worked there or some, some edge to get you in. Mm -hmm. So it, this was in the mid nineties. I started um, studying website development, which back in the mid nineties was still pretty new. Now the irony is we're in 2021 and it's still very new to most small business owners statistically, according to the U S small business administration and Forbes, something like, you know, half, I think, of struggling business owners are actually online and those who are online very few are using all the competitive strategies that they could. Uh, so I'm very, very passionate about that because right now we have COVID uh, running roughshod through most of the world. And if you're a business owner and you're not trying to rank in Google and you're not using e-commerce to take payments online for your services or for your your, the goods that you deliver or for downloads or consultations or whatever, you're leaving money on the table that larger competitors won't. So, um, you know, I also was a, um, a certified small business mentor for the U.S. Uh, uh, what is it? The United States Small Business Administration, excuse me. Mm -hmm. But anyway, to backtrack a little bit, um, yeah, I graduated from college and my first job was at a, a marketing agency. And so over the course of 20 to 25 years, I worked for different marketing and advertising agencies. Mm -hmm. And in between those positions, I worked as a freelancer you know, working with clients to help them accelerate growth using digital marketing and my experience working for marketing agencies. So it's very different because I had to learn how to apply the processes and the structures of these multi-million dollar agencies, you know, to me, working with a handful of other programmers, you know, when I needed them. So it was very different. 
So um, that's basically how I got started in marketing. And now knock on wood, thank God, uh, I'm at a point where I'm kind of semi-retired. I still enjoy working with clients, but I don't um, actively pursue them per se. If somebody wants to work with me, great. If they don't, that's perfectly fine with me. I don't, you know, uh, get bent out of shape about it. But um, that's the I best that place answered. to be pitching new business from too. The whole, look, I'm happy to have your business, but if it's not a great fit, then I'm not going to force it. It results in so many better relationships. Don't you find that? Yes. And to be quite honest with you, what I learn now is that that's, that's where everyone should be. Mm -hmm. Everyone, whether you're a big multi-million dollar agency, whether you're any kind of business, you want to be in that position where you're dealing from strength and not desperation. And really marketing can help any type of business or for that matter, freelancer try to level that playing field. For freelancers, I've said this a million times online, my heart goes out to you. You need to put together a list that you, you can refer to so that if you don't have a client, you can go to this list and find work from you know, agencies around the world and you know, refer back to that. You always want to be dealing from a position of strength and, and certainty. And I know how hard it is because I've been out there, you know, in between agency positions where I didn't know if I was going to be able to pay the rent that month. And, and I had to uh, learn how to pivot several times. You know, like they say, put your head on swivel. This is the NFL, you know, mm -hmm. or uh, what's the other expression? Wear a cup because it's dangerous out there. <laughs> you you have, you know, you have to learn how to adapt to changing times. So when I was in between agency positions and freelancing, if I had one client who could not or wouldn't, for whatever reason, give me the material I needed to fulfill a project, or they change their minds about something, you know, halfway into a project, which is called scope creep, for those who don't know, that could take a project that you were counting on to finish by a specific deadline because you need money to pay your bills. Now it could go on indefinitely. Yeah. So I had to learn how to screen clients and then onboard them and train them in how I work and how big you know agencies work and how these processes can help you, the business owner, get more. So there's a lot to unpack there, but that's basically you know how I got started. Cool, cool. Um, and so uh, we were talking a little bit before we started recording about doing a bit of a um, exercise in uh, digital marketing to kind of go over some big picture concepts that um, sure. we're very familiar with and use. So the hypothetical that we came up with was that I am a law firm in Miami, Florida. <laughs> um, I, you know, I'm a law firm owner in Miami, Florida. Yes. Maybe I have one or two associates in my firm and um, we've got a website, but haven't looked at it in like the last year and a half and are upset that we're not getting uh, oh. clients from this interwebs that I've heard so much about. Um, right. And so I come to you and I say, all right, uh, can you help my divorce law firm uh, get some clients online? And there's so much there. Yeah. There's so <laughs> much meat on those bones. Now, if we're talking about lawyers specifically in the legal profession, mm -hmm. one, one of the, I, I started two businesses with my wife during these interim periods, you know, uh, in between marketing agencies, I had training in mediation. I never went to law school. My GPA wasn't that great. And I really couldn't afford it, to be honest with you. But, or I didn't want to, probably more accurate. But <laughs> That was a good know, choice. I went to law yeah. school and I'm doing the same thing as you are now. And uh, I'm much happier doing this than I was in law school. <laughs> and there's so much that goes into this. Mm -hmm. um, from tools and processes and procedures. I could talk for hours just about, you know, marketing lawyers and law firms and mediators and so on with all the experiences I had. Mm -hmm. So I learned a tremendous amount from starting a nonprofit mediation mm -hmm. organization. You can imagine this nonprofit sliding scale mm -hmm. and mediation in a small town where 
there was next to no competition for mediation because people didn't know what that meant. Most people don't, you yeah. know. So, um, so if you came to me now, immediately as someone who's worked with lawyers and resolved disputes with lawyers, mm -hmm. I know intellectually that lawyers are trained in law school to embrace an adversarial approach in court. It's it's one side against the other. Yep. which mediation is more reconciliation of these two parties to come to terms with the contract that we can agree on. So it's a different mindset. And so you have to be able to, if you're the lawyer or the small law firm, first of all, the issues you're gonna run into before I can even talk to you about A, diagnosing your problems, and then um, writing out your objectives and then coming up with a plan to achieve these goals, right? Before we can do that, first of all, I have, we, the, both of us have to work through what is the resistance? What have you already tried yourself, by yourself, for yourself that hasn't worked? 99.9% .9 of the time, you would have gone to Wix or Weebly or Squarespace or WordPress.com. You created a do-it-yourself generic template. And you don't know why you're not getting any phone calls. Yeah, and, and I did the whole you, blogging like, thing after reading a, uh, this is me right. as the hypothetical lawyer, after reading an article on SEO and finding out that was important. But after, you know, three months of one article a week, nothing happened for us. So, you know, we kind of abandoned that. Right. And that's, and that's extremely typical. And I'm sure that's why you're citing it. So before, you know, imagine if I came up to that hypothetical lawyer and said, okay, sir, this is what you need to do. We need to embrace SEO. We need to establish a budget for PPC. We need to pr produce more content. We need to produce white papers. Uh, we need to start a podcast. It needs to be a video podcast. So you've got more marketing collateral to produce. We need to make sure that you, you know, your website is secure um, and having, you know, daily backups. They're going to look at me and go, whoa, wait a minute. This yeah. is complete, total overwhelm. And, and they won't know where to begin. And okay, well, what's your budget? They're more likely to say $200 or, <laughs> you know, or, or something, you know, that they would budget for a meal out really with a client. Yeah. than what would be realistic. So you've got all of this. So before I can help you, first we have to get through what is the resistance? Because you've already tried to do it yourself and it didn't work. So are you receptive to experienced professional help, yeah. but it's not free? Yeah. And, then, and then we walk you through screening to see if we're a good fit. Mm -hmm. And then an onboarding process to train you and how we work, how are design, design decisions made? You probably don't know. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yep. There's nothing wrong with that because if you're not a, a digital marketing expert or a designer, how are you going to know? What yeah, should you ask? And I think one of the things about um, attorneys is they spend their whole days being experts at something. So when they come up with right. up against something they're not an expert in, it's like it's very foreign, which makes total sense because you know, you're dealing with the law, you're dealing with something you know a ton right. of all the time. <laughs> right. You're, you're a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know anything about tort law. I mean, it's not entirely true. I know a little bit, <laughs> but I also, you know, a tiny minutia more than the average, you know, person off the street, but would never presume, you know, to, 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 to say that I know more than that. So, I mean, I, I don't know anything about tort law, divorce law, how to represent yourself in court. I mean, I would be imbecilic. Yep. So that's the whole thing. You're the expert in what you do. When you go to the dentist, you don't go to the dentist and say, listen, this is what kind of enamel you should use. It should be this color. These are the types of screws that I want you to use. These are the types of tools. This is how long it should take. This is how much it should cost. Yep. And this is the type of painkiller you should be giving me and, and everything else. They would never hear that. They would never tolerate that. Or a mechanic, imagine going to the mechanic. These are the tools you should use. This is how long it should take you. This is how much it should cost. This is what it should all look like being done. Yep. But, but they'll do that with a digital marketer because the digital marketer nine times out of 10 doesn't know how to unpack all of these 
tools and processes with the lawyer or the business owner. And I'm not saying I'm a master of doing that. I'm not the Yoda of it. <laughs> but I've, after 20, 25 years of doing this, you would hope that I know a little bit. So the first thing I do is say, well, Mr. Lawyer, thank you so much. Please let's slow down and let's diagnose, first of all, the resistance to this. Mm -hmm. You know, what have you done so far? Mm -hmm. What worked for you? What did not? Mm -hmm. What are you happy with? What are you unhappy with and why? And we have to do this. Um, and then we unpack all what did these things feel like to make it real to them? What would it feel like if you could get one new client calling you or emailing you per week? What would that be worth to you? Would you be, would you be, what would you be willing to invest if I could get you one new client per week or, or even for that matter per month for most lawyers or law firms, one new client per month could be worth what? 10, 30 grand. Yep. Yep. And you know, in the accident attorney, uh, genre, uh, uh, area of practice, pardon me. Um, you know, that could be millions of dollars. <laughs> right. So, okay. So let's say, look, one, client. one new at the lowest possible minimal rate, one new client, or at least it's up to you to onboard the client. Obviously you're the lawyer. You got to screen and onboard the client. I can't do that for you. I once created a, 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 a beautiful a site for a business owner. And I will, obviously I'm not going to say who it was, but he was getting overwhelmed with phone calls as soon as the site went live, like two weeks after the site went live, he <laughs> called me up and he said, you got to take it down. And I said, why? What's, what's wrong? He said, I'm getting phone calls and emails every damn day. I can't handle it. <laughs> and I, and I knew that he was telling the truth. I knew he was telling the truth because I get copies. Mm -hmm. I get CC copies of the emails that most of my clients get because a lot of them don't respond to emails. Some of them are older. So I would pick up the phone and call him and say, you just got a phone call from a live one. He wants to work with you. Please call him up. I can't do it for you. Yeah. I have some, I have clients who pay me a monthly wage. So every time they get an email, I call them up and say, you just got a phone call from a potential new customer or client. You really should call them. <laughs> Oh man! You really should, and you you know, you can and then the I, I the water, right? <laughs> yeah, but you know, a, a lot of small business owners are like that. Yep. And you know, it's just overwhelm. There's so much going on. Yeah. And I, I I get it. So you offer to help them. So. All right. So I'm over my. So as the law firm owner, I'm over my uh, doubt and trepidation and resistance to. Okay. You know, good. New things and. Um, you know, I want two or three new clients a week because, you know, divorce law is not terribly lucrative. Um, so, you know, you want. Oh, I don't agree with that at all. Well, not, not a, sorry, not as lucrative as like a, you know, million dollar accident case. Right. Uh, but yes, it is lucrative. Right. You know, you the, and, and, right. So what I would do is I would diagnose the issues by talking to the lawyer. And then I would say, that sounds great. Obviously this, just as the lawyer has paid discovery, I have paid discovery. Now my rate is gonna be cheaper than the lawyer mm -hmm. just by virtue of me not being a lawyer, but also it's gonna be, I want to train you mm -hmm. in how I work. I wanna matriculate you into my process of how I work. So it's not about making money, at least not for me at this point in my life, but I'm gonna charge enough that the lawyer respects my time. So yeah. we're gonna, first we'll have one or two screening calls to see if we're a good fit for each other. Then we'll have, um, you know, the, 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 dis the paid discovery call. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna request that they review a workbook you know, when they pay for the discovery call, I'm going to say, hey, that's great. Before we have our call, please download and read through this workbook. Not intellectually, are they going to do it? Probably not. Yes. But, but what you do is when they ask you all of these questions, well, how much is a website? How much is SEO? How much is, is professional design? How much is e-commerce? How much is everything? Like they're going to McDonald's and they're buying one chicken nugget you know, at a time rather than the whole meal, basically it's a, it's commoditization. So what I say is, well, sir, I already have all that information rehearsed. I sent you the workbook. I guess you didn't have time to review it. So 
Let's go ahead and look at it. Open it up on your end and, and I'll go over all of these questions with you so you can see the answers. How do you budget? Here's the infographic that shows this. How long should a project take? Here's the infographic to show this. How do you develop content? Here's the infographic that shows the three, the three silos of content marketing. Then the workbook has the exercises to help you produce that content. Mm -hmm. You know, so that gives them something to chew on during that discovery call. And I know that that's what they're going to ask for the most part. So mm -hmm. we've got to get all that done mm -hmm. before we can move forward. Then we have another meeting to have project kickoff where I get all the usernames and passwords and so on. Mm -hmm. You know, and I left out the important step, obviously, of in between that paid discovery call and project kickoff, they have to approve my proposal mm -hmm. and my contract and do the e-signature for the contract and make their down payment. So mm -hmm. we have to take them through that process before you can start doing anything uh, with them. And just like the lawyer is going to have his discovery yep. consultation and so on and my process is similar uh to that and and based on all of that will we come up with a plan of attack so to speak and it's going to involve working on a serious you know deliberate organized uh methodology for building a foundation for the future mm -hmm. so you know if you want me to get into it i will i mean that's responsive yeah. web responsive website design what does that mean? That means that your website has to look and feel the same way on all devices. So, you know, if you're struggling and your website doesn't work on a modern smartphone, how does that help you? It doesn't. Google will actually penalize you if your site is not fully responsive and doesn't load quickly. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's important. Next is SEO. What is SEO? That's how you outrank competitors online. Google is the number one search engine in the world. The number two search engine in the world is YouTube, also owned by Google. Yahoo and Bing exist, obviously, but they take a bulk of their search results from Google. So Google is dominant. Having a Facebook page does not give you any kind of Google ranking at all. And, Google, and Facebook changes their layout and privacy settings and everything very regularly and they don't owe you jack and the thing is what a lot of people don't know about these so-called free do-it-yourself template builder thingamajigs is that you're getting what you pay for <laughs> and you really i mean i've seen businesses really go under because of their dedication to trying to get something for nothing I had a lawyer, and I'll tell you, this is a, was a very painful story. I had uh, gone through a period, my wife had um, uh, tested positive uh, for breast cancer, right? I'm so sorry to hear that. So, yeah, thank God, knock on wood, she's fine now. Thank you. Oh, uh, but anyway, I'm taking, I'm taking her to, uh, you know, get the radiation treatment, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I, to say I was stressed was an understatement. I was very, very stressed out. Of course. Yeah. And yeah, now I had completely forgotten. I had scheduled a call with a lawyer and I, she actually had two areas of practice. I don't remember what the two of them were because this was a while ago. And um, I had scheduled a call with her while my wife was going to be in the doctor's office getting radiation. And I'm sitting in the car talk, you know, I'd completely forgotten it. I was so stressed out. I didn't sleep that well, you know, for obvious reasons. So I'm talking to the lawyer on the phone. I was like, oh, I better drink half of this Red Bull before I talk to her, right? Mm -hmm. Which, you know, not always a good idea. And so I'm talking to her and I, I didn't tell her what was going on. What, you know, it's not really professional. And I just said, ma'am, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Big mistake. So why was that a mistake? She asked me, how do I get my Wix website to be number one in the Google? How do I, how do I get my, how do I get my free Wix website to accept e-commerce? I can charge clients and, you know, and I also want them to be able to download uh, forms 
And, you know, I want to be able to book uh, consultations and different types of appointments and so on. And, you know, my budget is like $100 or something ridiculous like that. And she's like, and I'm paying someone for a PPC, which for those who don't know is pay-per-click. It's online advertising. So she's throwing all this at me and I'm answering all of her questions. And after about an hour, she said, I got to tell you. I'm completely overwhelmed. I have no idea how to do any of this stuff, uh, any of this stuff by myself. I don't know what to do. I already started working part-time at Starbucks because I'm not getting any phone calls at all. No emails, no phone calls, period. And so I started telling her, well, you, you have no local SEO. Your website doesn't work on my phone. I tried looking at it for you. I tried submitting your form. The form doesn't work. Yeah. Or a lot of lawyers don't even have contact forms, you know, um, saying that. And she just said, you know what? I'm just going to go get a full-time job at Starbucks. I can't get a grip on this. And I said, ma'am, for the 3000 you're spending per month on these PPC ads that aren't generating any results at all, I'd be happy to completely redo your site for you. I could easily register you with all the directories online and, I can't guarantee that you're going to get a new client every week, but almost, I mean, I could practically guarantee you that things would move for you. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's, there's just no way that's not going to generate results for you. You've got almost no competition locally. Plus you practice law in two different areas. Come on. I could do a lot for you. And she was completely overwhelmed. And I just said, all right, well, you know what? Have a nice day. If you want to keep in touch, feel free. But I knew she wouldn't because she was completely overwhelmed. Yeah. And so they don't, they, it, it, it's a field of expertise unto itself. That's why we have jobs. So like, if you try and just do that and not really know about it, it's like you and me trying to go to court without any legal briefs or whatever, you know, you're just not prepared. <laughs> right. And I felt terrible. Uh, after the conversation, because my wife comes and she gets in the car and I ask her, you know, well, how things, how did things go? How are you feeling? You know, uh, you know, what, what did the doctor say? What, what's the regimen? What do we do? You know, all of this stuff. And then she's like, well, how was your call? And I said, oh my God, it was a complete, you know, disaster, you know, just at one hour, just answering, you know, technical questions that she didn't, you know, she wanted to implement herself, but didn't know what any of it meant. So that was educational for me because I realized never talk tech. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I do. So I never, ever talk tech. What I talk about is achieving goals, setting priorities, putting plans in motion. And then do you want to achieve these? Are you ready to, real, to budget realistically with, you know, what's a, a very common, very modest industry standard? And I explain all of that. So now, even if I do a free consultation where we just see, are we a good fit for each other? Mm -hmm. Is the person psychotic or are they rational? Basically, yeah. you know, that's the free consultation. Are you sane? <laughs> then we can, then we can, uh, okay, now we know we can at least talk together. Now we'll schedule two or three of these calls to work through the resistance, mm -hmm. you know, then the paid discovery call to come up with a plan, but the workbook oh. yep. walks them through all of this. Okay. So I've gone through the workbook. I understand what it takes. I'm willing to budget $5,000 for um, advertising in total. And then your fee is separate from that advertising budget. Um, that's wonderful. Yeah. That's, that's more than most. Yes. That's, that's, that's much higher than uh, what most people would even consider would be reasonable, believe it or not. Now, if you were to call a marketing agency, they cannot and will not even talk to you in most cases for less than 10 grand mm -hmm. because they have so much overhead. Yep. You know, but, but most individuals, uh, consultants would be very happy with that. Yeah. Unless you have cra yeah, I mean, crazy goals. Yeah. Like I, you know, uh, it, for, for my individual practice, I'm not paying a designer. I'm doing all the designs myself and you know, see what I mean? and building everything myself and See? some things I'm better than at others, but it's all me. So it's much more efficient in that regard. And there's fewer mouths to feed. <laughs> right. But by doing it all yourself for yourself, it's very possible that you could have blind spots. 
Mm-hmm. You know, remember Hamlet couldn't see everything going on because he was too caught up in avenging, you know, his father's uh, demise. You know, I call it the Hamlet complex. You can call it the, the the savior complex where you're trying to do everything yourself for yourself by yourself. You don't need no help. You can do it all alone. And, you know, look, I've been doing it for 20, 25 years. I can't do it all by myself because yep. there's too there's too many different moving pieces to put together and you can never really look at it objectively. You that know? is true. That's one of the reasons I started this podcast was to talk shop uh, with other folks like myself, so that I was uh, at least making an attempt to um, uh, see what my blind spots were and learn from other professionals who had more experience um, than I do. And, you know, maybe right. I'm something I'm doing and maybe they DIY. Have- <laughs> yeah. DIY is the death knell yeah. for most businesses. <laughs> I yep. mean, it, it just is. I mean, I, if you try do it yourself plumbing, if you try do it, do it yourself auto maintenance, you know, unless you already are an expert in these things, you realize very quickly just how complicated they are. And the problem is most people look at marketing is I don't really need it or it's an afterthought that you look at after your, your business is already up and running. And that's the opposite way that you should be looking at it, yep. you know? It's like getting the the COVID vaccine after you're already in the hospital. It's not going to help you at that point. And they tell you that, you know, please don't do that, you know. Um, So, you know, you you can't really see your, the, the picture completed when you're already inside the frame. So ideally you want to have all of this organized before you begin because if you have one of these do-it-yourself uh, free template builder things nine times out of ten we have to gut it mm-hmm. and start and start from scratch or if we rebuild it you know it's like well you may as well start from scratch because now we have to add all the seo on so many different levels you're talking permalinks um, permalink, you know, permalink structure, external linking topic tags, alt tags for all the images and all these tools that I could just go on and on and on about, mm-hmm. you know, and there's, what's the point of talking about the tools if we can't use them the right way? So we have to put all of this together into a deliberate organized plan of attack first then we allocate the resources, then we mobilize our assets like in the military. You don't send the military in if you don't know what you're up against. And, you know, that's what they did in Vietnam and it didn't go so well. Yeah, you can say that again. (laughs) Um, Okay, so my site was, you know, my hypothetical site was on a, you know, a, a template. I don't know what a tag is or a alt tag is or any of that. Right. Uh, stuff what should you know how, how would you gut the site and start from scratch what are what are we adding to it um what's important for there to be on that home page should i just have a video a picture of me and my huge <laughs> phone number uh, a video huh yeah why is that why do you why do you think that is because it's immediately engaging and it sets you apart from most other attorneys and it gets people yes. comfortable with your face and comfortable with uh working with you by starting a parasocial relationship. That's part of it. Those are all good reasons. Now, another big reason, I would say the main reason, um, is remember, YouTube is the number two search engine in the world owned by Google. So guess what? The two search engines are going to know each other. So if you have a video with the same SEO as your website. So let's say you're a Miami, Florida uh, divorce lawyer. Okay, there's going to be a lot of competition for that in Miami. I don't know why, but a lot of people are getting divorced in Miami. Maybe it's because it's a big city and it's just fun to get divorced there. I don't know. But, you know, and here's the thing, how many divorce mediators are there in Miami, Florida who have decent websites? Probably not many. But So my point with that is that if you're a mediator or you could provide mediation, that could give you a niche market, uh, an open area of vulnerability in the market that you could exploit. 
But if you're the divorce lawyer, here's what I would tell you. And this is just to get started. Mm -hmm. And anybody listening to this, God bless you. If you want to go out here and try to do all of this yourself for free, that's fine. But there's a lot of different component parts to all of this. And everything has to work together in unison in order to deliver the maximum results. So heed my advice, please, that you want to organize everything deliberately first before you start throwing rice at the wall. So the first thing I would tell you to do is after all the, the, the screen, then the onboarding and, and, and just, you know, whittling away at the resistance toward um, change and working out the budget and beginning to work with the client. So all of this aside, we've already gone through that, right? Mm -hmm. So first thing we want to do is get a professionally, well, we don't even want to do that. We want to come up with our branding, our logo, our color palette for the site so that everything matches, everything looks professional and corporate and, and cohesive and has a, a, a professional slick feel to it. Okay, so that's the first thing we want to do. And we want to work on that. Then we want to start writing the marketing collateral. So we've got, you know, a month or two of blog posts that are well written, intelligent, articulate and entertaining for the reader. While we're after we've got that, then we want to produce at least one or two good commercial videos for the practice or firm so that it would have the branded logo, it would be in the right color. For example, my brand color is blue, it's my favorite color. So all everything I produce should, you know, be in some kind of gradient or, or, or shade of blue. It's not that I'm obsessed with blue, but it's a visual way to differentiate yourself and make people feel more at ease. Like, hey, this guy is professional. At least he cares how he puts himself out there to the world, you know, and it makes people feel more comfortable. There's been a million psychological studies on this. And I can cite those sources too, if you remind me. Uh, okay. So you wanna have that in order first. So make sure you know what your local SEO is first. All SEO starts local, just like politics. So if you're in a highly competitive market, like divorce law in Miami, Florida, then what you might want to do is narrow it down by the specific zip code or the, the city within Miami or the, the, the neighborhood or borough, whatever they call it. You know, like in New York, they have boroughs. Mm -hmm. So you might want to be ultra, what they call hyper local. Mm -hmm. Okay. So while we're working on that, you know, we want to find that local SEO. We start putting all of this together under the hood within the company website, within the practice or law firm website before it goes live. While we're working on that, we also make sure that our listings on all the local directories are up to date and current. Uh, so Google My Business, numero uno, okay? Because Google My Business is also owned by Google, obviously, and it also goes into MapQuest. So you wanna be covered in all the local directories, uh, including Yelp and Google My Business, and our companies that would do all of that for you for like a monthly subscription. And they'll make the updates to them whenever you want. And it's, it's very above board. And, you know, whatever change you make will populate through all of these, all, you know, at the same time. So you want to streamline all these processes and get all these assets together so that when the site finally does go live, it's like, boom, it hits the internet. And then you have all your blog posts for the next 30, 60, 90 days scheduled mm -hmm. so that for like every day for the next month or two it looks like there's a new blog post on your website every day for like the next 30 60 90 days why would you want to do that that basically tells google which at the end of the day is a big giant indexing program that's why they call it a search engine it's an indexing program so by doing that, you kind of, you don't trick Google, but you're basically telling Google, this website is the happening place. You want to come here all the time. So 
that's where you want to get started. And as an aside, I'll tell you a brief story. When I was in Denver, I was um, extremely active because I was working full time at an agency and hustling like crazy, at least for a few years anyway. I kind of faded it out, phased it out like in the last maybe five years or so. I just kind of slowly kind of got tired of it and didn't need to. So every weekend I'm doing workshops, boot camps at local libraries and uh, associations are really good and so on. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have like, I, I had like three different websites at that time, specifically to target Denver, Colorado mm -hmm. as a digital marketer and web developer and SEO guru guy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So one day a competitor calls me out of the blue and he calls me up and he says, you beautiful, expletive expletive <laughs> now i knew who it was because of his voice and everything but also he talked and he was a very big very gregarious outgoing guy as you could tell by the word choice so i knew who it was and we had gone out before and hung out together and he was one of these guys that's just like so likable mm -hmm. you know he's a competitor but he's just so likable you just don't care <laughs> And so anyway, he calls me out of the blue and he says, you beautiful blankety blank blank. What, how did you do it? I said, what are you talking about? He said, you're number one in Google for web design in Denver, Colorado. Now there are a lot of multi-million dollar agencies in Denver, a lot. So he said, how did you outrank them? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> what are you talking about? You don't know. And um, so anyway, he said that I, I had outranked them all. And I said, well, that would explain why I've been getting phone calls and emails like every 15 minutes for the last couple of weeks. It's overwhelming. And basically, after I hung up the phone with him, I thought about it for a few minutes because it was kind of out of the blue. Yeah. And I said, OK, now I get it. It made sense to me because what I had been doing, I didn't, you know. I didn't, I didn't look at Google rankings every day. It's too stressful. Yep. So what it was, was I had been working on my site every day, writing about and linking to all these workshops and boot camps that I was conducting in Denver, in Aurora, in local neighboring cities, Centennial. I was active in local politics. I was tying that in. So I was blogging on a very, very regular basis about all these things that I was doing concerning digital marketing and SEO and web design in Denver and neighboring cities. And I was linking to all of these events, event listings, right, externally. Mm -hmm. So Google looked at it and said, this guy's site is changing every day. Everything is about these topics. and Everything is local. So it pushed me up to number one in Google. Were they also, were these websites also linking back to you? They were mine. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. no. I mean, um, were the, were the event websites also linking? Back? Yes, absolutely. 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 Everything you do, everything you create, everything you say, every step you take, every move you make, like the police song, <laughs> you know, they say, I'll be watching you. Well, yeah. every move you make, every step you take should be linking to you. And yeah. not just your social media accounts, but primarily, where do I go to get in touch with this guy? So over time, and, you know, I just kind of semi-retired uh, a few years ago. And I just said, look, I'm just going to be one guy who works with a handful of freelancers uh, when and if I need the help. And I just said, use my initials and my favorite color. It's so simple. <laughs> and that's what, and, and I'm not saying that to boost any, anything of my own. I'm saying it to show an example of marketing. So make it easy to remember. So easy to remember. People can't believe it. And you drill that into their head because studies have shown that people have to hear and see something seven times yep. before they will act on it or take it seriously. The, the great uh, um, motivational speaker, Les Brown, has said this in his uh, presentations multiple, multiple times. He says this over and over again, this fact. Um, and it's very true. So every time I talk to people, I say, well, look, 
DMS are my initials. I'm a digital marketing specialist. I, I give people digital marketing solutions. So my website is dms.blue. And they look at me and they see the color blue. They hear my name. They, oh, he's a digital marketing specialist who provides a digital marketing solution. After you say that seven times or so, they go, oh, okay, I know how to find this guy. Yep. Right? So that's what you want as a business owner or a, a law firm uh, owner. You know, that's what you want. And you want to look at digital marketing as something that, yes, you can take advantage of this. It is doable. I gave, um, I didn't give the presentation, but I was asked to speak at a law firm about digital marketing for lawyers. And I posted the video because I, my hope was that it might help someone. But in the presentation, there's two very nice ladies. One was on my left and one was to my right. And they were super nice and very sweet, wonderful, wonderful uh, competent professional ladies. One lady said basically in a nutshell that she really didn't use digital marketing very much. She did everything by phone because a lot of her clients were older, low tech, didn't use the internet. So she'd get in a car or use the phone. Mm -hmm. I have to wonder how that's working right now. <laughs> another, and then another lady said that a local agency built a site for her, but in her own words, she said it wasn't very good. And had all kinds of problems, but she still recommended them. And so I'm sitting there in the middle of this as the, the digital marketing expert with, you know, 20 plus years experience. And I was a mediator too. And I'm just sitting there talking. And I'm like, what they're saying is more sad to me. Yeah. Because how is that acceptable? One is saying I didn't get the results that I wanted, but it's okay. Because I, I just came to, to grips, I guess, with not being able to get what you want. And then the other lady saying, for whatever reason, I don't use it at all. And the law firm that I went to, I couldn't get directions to the firm on my phone. I couldn't find their firm website. And then when I did, I couldn't find an interactive map. And I couldn't find them in MapQuest or Google Maps. So I had to get out my, I had to switch out of it and get on the phone and call the guy organizing the meeting and say, how do I get to your firm? Can you please give me directions? And I have to take out a piece of paper or a napkin or something and write out the directions because I can't find it in Google Maps. Just as an FYI, Oof. I don't know if you care, but I'm just telling you. You got to wonder how many clients that firm has missed out on because of that sort of thing. Oof. Well, they're a local firm mm -hmm. in a small retirement area in Florida. And they're right. Most of their clients are not going to use the internet. Mm -hmm. You know, so they, they see it as something that they don't need. And they would be what I would call a legacy law firm mm -hmm. where you get most of your clients through court transactions, referrals, yellow pages, or signs on the side of a bus or a billboard or something like that. And even these lousy billboards are super competitive <laughs> and they're astronomically priced. So it's like, why you're doing that to yourself? I don't know. Cause all these older people are going to die out pretty soon. Yeah. You know, there's the attrition and they're going to be replaced by people who do know how to use the internet. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Um, so you know, Speaking of, but, the, um, uh, of yeah, yeah, uh, platforms, you know, um, like legacy platforms and things like that. Um, talking about newer platforms like um, Facebook, Yelp, you mentioned earlier. Uh, full disclosure, I used to work at Yelp calling businesses um, to uh, try to get them to advertise with us. And we ran into it. I'm sorry. Thing. Yeah, it was not fun. <laughs> um, no, and I'm sure you've heard of the term. Um, what is the, what term do they use? Yelp. Um, it's not Yelp hostage, but Yelp something else. Yelp extortion, I think, is a term that I've heard bandied about uh, from people. And I'm not saying anything against Yelp. So please don't, don't sue me. I, Yelp is a wonderful <laughs> company. I love Yelp. They're a great company. I don't see anything wrong with them. I, I'm just saying that I heard that term used by some people. So 
uh, and when, again, with Yelp, you have to have the right SEO, you have to have professional branding, they're going to want that uh, you to have blog posts and videos to you so you look professional, mm -hmm. they're going to want to, you know, uh, photos of the staff, so you look professional. And if you're a savvy internet user, and you don't have these things, how's that going to look? Yep. You know, I remember talking to a lawyer once who had a free do-it-yourselfer template. And he couldn't understand why he wasn't getting anywhere. I looked at the site and it had a photo of him, very dark, poorly lit photo of him standing in front of a courthouse. And he looked very angry. And there was almost no written content on the site and no, no videos of any kind. And you know, I could tell right away why he wasn't getting any leads from it. Because if you're a savvy internet user, you're going to look at it and go, well, I don't know anything about him. His site looks incomplete. So is he a scammer? Or, you know, is there some kind of phishing scheme or something? I, I, I don't know if I could, you know, this doesn't look, it doesn't feel like a real law firm website. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, whatever I'd, platform you're on, you want to put forward a friendly face. Um, and all of these things are technical, yeah. you know, so if you don't know how to create the images, if you don't know how to size the images or how to put the branding on them, then you're not going to be able to do a very good job. It'll look like something a 10 year old did if you don't know how to do it. And um, he was overwhelmed and angry because he wasn't getting any traction. And when I talked to him two or three times, you know, why aren't you doing anything about this? And he said, well, everything has to be free. And I said, but I don't understand why, why is that? And he said, well, honestly, this is what he said. I work for a very large law firm already. They get all the referrals from court referrals or, you know, walk in. All the lawyers are much older. They, they get the referrals from playing golf and everything and, and bus stop signs and everything. So they see the internet as a fad or something only a few, you know, handful of people use. And I looked at the website for the larger law firm and sure enough, he was right. It looked like a PowerPoint presentation. And so he was still working with them full time. So his idea or his hobby was one day having his own practice, but there was no hurry because he's in his fifties or early sixties. If he starts his own practice, fine. If he doesn't, he could probably, you know, retire too. And it's no big deal. So he didn't really have any skin in the game. So for him spending two or $3,000 at the lowest to reboot the site and try to get local ranking, uh, local SEO was too much. Mm. He had it. He would probably spend that on, you know, going to one convention or something, you know, or one, one trip or something like that, or one nice suit for that matter. But it was more than he wanted to invest because he saw it as an expense, not as an investment that he didn't need. So why not just whittle away at it for free over the course of five years and see if one day it'll, it'll take. And that's how long he had been working on it. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it's uh, a lot. If it's not your subject matter area, it's difficult to kind of grasp all that goes into it. But that's understandable. I mean, there's lots of like, I, I don't know anything about accounting. So I, I would not, I don't really understand uh, the minutia of what accountants do very well. Uh, so one I, of my, you know, you get at that. Uh, uh, well, I, I'll just say this two of my best legacy clients have been with me for 10 years or more now. And they, they pay me a monthly fee to basically, you know, check their sites on a daily basis, do daily backups, do security scans, call them if there's an issue. If they have a problem, they know they can call me on speed dial or send me an email and I respond within a few hours. Mm -hmm. If they write a blog post, I'll format it for them. You know, they're one per month, depending on the, 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 you know, the, the plan. If they want a video commercial, I'll work with them to develop one, you know, so they've got access. So anyway, two of my best legacy clients, basically their approach was, look, one was a private investigator. She had tried to do it herself for like two or three years, mm -hmm. two or three years. Her website, and she knows this, it looked like a grocery list. 
<laughs> literally it looked like a grocery list on a, on a sheet of paper that's what it looked like Ouch. and she's one of the sweetest ladies in the world after i had spoken at her association so she knew i was very serious about it she assumed that i was professional and everything so after two or three years one day she calls me up and she says i gotta get a professional website i've been trying to do this myself for two or three years now People look at my site and they 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 make comments about it. Um, I've had clients who said they tried to look me up online. They saw my website. They decided to go with someone else. Uh, so it's very serious at this point. Let's work out a budget. Let's get it done. I wanted to work on on modern smartphones first and foremost, number one, and then on desktops and laptops secondary. I said we can do that. And there wasn't much resistance because she already perceived me as an expert and someone who cared. And so now it's been like 10, 12 years and she's one of the best clients in the world. But because all of that resistance and pushback was already removed and another, and also she was like, look, I'm an expert in being a private investigator. I don't have time to go and study the SEO trends and yep. Google analytics and how to back up the website and then and, and set up security for the website to make sure it isn't hacked and tested on mobile devices and set up e-commerce. And I, I just don't have the time to study all of this because she knew it would take months, if not years to learn all of this mm -hmm. so that you could do it and then make the updates and, and so on. Yep. So just do it. <laughs> and it was, and, and that was great. I said, thank you so much. <laughs> That's fantastic. She sounds like a fan, uh, ideal client. Uh, right. And another one was a, a local mom and pop optician. Mm -hmm. They were in their seventies. Well, I'm not an optician. <laughs> right. And they said, well, we, we tried to build websites before we tried hiring people on Craigslist and Fiverr for $10 and nothing ever looks good. They, they, they disappear after we pay them $10. And of course I'm biting my tongue and we, we knew each other. So they just said, would you create something for us? But because of what we do, it's got to look visually beautiful, very attractive. Uh, because we're, what we do is visual. So visually, it's got to look stunning. It's got to be very modern. And we want to be able to bid on government contracts. We want uh, employees to be able to clock in on the company website. And we can trace their hours work worked and know that they're there, that they log in on the website, on the store premises. We want to be able to track receipts and move them to the cloud storage and all of these things. So I quote, I said, that's fine. I can do all of that. It's going to take X amount of time to roll out. Here's what your down payment will be. Here's the plan. And I'll give you a let, I'll give you some options. You know, I'm willing to allay some of the cost. If you give me, uh, what was it? Three grand worth of glasses for my wife and I. Uh -huh. So now I, I have more blue glasses probably than Elton John and my <laughs> wife has all these purple ones. And that was part of our agreement. But uh, again, the point was that they cut, they came at it and said, look, we know we're, we're experts in what we do. We don't have months to study SEO, e-commerce, content marketing, email automation, branding, design, PPC, social media marketing, social media, uh, uh, you know, what channels to use, what the design should be. We don't know how to write our blog posts and create the links. And we don't have time to study all of that, you know, because yep. that's the time that you should be catering to your own clients. Mm -hmm. So that makes it so much easier. And then you can really knock it out of the park for them because the resistance has been removed as a result of learned experience, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Um, and also it's like you're uh, with some upfront time involved, like, a, you know, getting all the, uh, getting everything in the right order. Um, then the process becomes so much more efficient that even <laughs> if you're creating a ton of content, uh, you're doing it so efficiently that it's, um, eventually takes less time and becomes a bit more automated than just throwing, as you said, rice against the wall and uh, seeing what sticks. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, when you have a style guide that shows your colors, when you already have a system for getting all the branded images that you need, when you have a system for creating videos that are branded, 
when you already know what your font should be, which is mm -hmm. the font is the lettering so that everything looks consistent. I mean, imagine writing a blog post in one font and then another blog post in a different font or one video that looks completely different from another. It's going to look haphazard. You're giving me anxiety different. just thinking about it. <laughs> right. So, I mean, when you have all of that already worked out, yep. things, things just work. Things okay. just work effortlessly. And that's the way it should be. It should be like you're going into Chipotle to place an order. <laughs> you know, how yep. they have a process that they walk you through and everything works one, two, three. Yeah, you exactly. Know? You don't need to go to a different station for a burrito um, right. or a taco or whatever. <laughs> right. When you go to the airport, you don't tell the airport, you know, this, this is how, how fast I want to get there. This is how much it should cost. This yeah. is what, you know, how you should treat me. This is the food that I want. You know, they tell you, they Big tell perfect. you what it's going to be. And they walk you through a very deliberate process that you really don't have a lot of say in negotiating. You have to go through this line. They're going to check you to see if you have any weapons. Now they want to screen you and see if you have COVID. And they should, obviously. Yeah. You know, they want to look at your test results to see if, you know, how did you, uh, how did this work? Um, you know, they tell you what airline you're going to go on, when you're going to arrive, and what condition, and what kind of... Um, you know, seating, it's going to be your comfort level. They tell you all of that, including how much it will pay. And they give you maybe two or three options that if you want to save a little bit of money, we can put you in with the cargo or something, you know, <laughs> so you, can, you know, so you can save more money, but they have a very systemized process to walk you through. Once you have that as a business owner, things are so much easier, whether you're a lawyer a doctor, a mechanic, a tattoo artist, or a digital marketer, you know, Speaking of that and just, process, you know, um, if I get, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I, sure, sure, sure. Uh, but speaking of that process, so I've set up the, um, we've set up the website together. I've written the month of blogs. We've got the nice video of, you know, Kramer and Sons lawyer on the front page. Sure, that uh, sounds great. Of the site. And I've, given you the $5,000 uh, paid ads budget. Um, how would you go about splitting that up? I, mean, I know Miami is a very competitive marketplace. Um, when you say, sure, when you say split it up, what do you mean? Do you mean how would I help you achieve a higher ranking in Google? No, so if we're running paid ads, would you split like, you know, to uh, each, um, you know, three different platforms for a third of the budget or, uh, would you mm. go into PPC on Google or, you know, what would that kind of, or, you know, Facebook ads, um, Facebook ads are yeah. kind of my wheelhouse. I feel real comfortable there. Um, so that's where I direct the majority of my mm. efforts. Um, but what, what does that sort of process look like for you in terms of splitting up a $5,000 budget for a attorney? Is that, does sure. it, is that clear? Yeah, I think so. So here's the thing each different social media marketing channel that you would use to grow your business, or in this case, the hypothetical law firm, each different social media channel is different. They have different users. They have a different market. So Facebook is used by well over 2 billion people per day. So it's very broad, very. Now, Facebook owns Pinterest. Um, no, no, excuse me, Instagram, yeah, yeah. which is very visual, which is very visual. Pinterest is very visual, but it's all images. So you wouldn't want to use Pinterest for a lawyer, in my opinion. You would use Pinterest if you're a graphic artist or you do uh, work with imagery primarily. Yeah, LinkedIn targets people who want to be seen as more professional, more serious minded. It's more expensive. It's more surgical. So it depends on what you want. Facebook is cheaper, but there's so much more competition. And you're trying to appeal to everybody and their kid brother. <laughs> so it's very easy to spend money on Facebook ads and not get any traction. Even though it's not a lot, you're, not, you're also not getting a lot. LinkedIn is more surgical, more precise. It's more, but you're getting, you, you have a better chance of 
targeting people. So if you were a divorce lawyer, I would tell you, okay, let's spend just to start. And I shouldn't say spend, I should say, let's invest a quarter of your budget in Facebook ads, targeting people who are researching divorce law, who are members of divorce support groups on Facebook. Then let's take another third and invest that into LinkedIn. Any conversation has to do with divorce law, divorce proceedings, custody, uh, mediation, and so on. And divorce, mediation, child support, custody groups on LinkedIn. So that's what I would do. Then I would take the rest and I would, I would sit on it and I'd get on the phone with someone at Google very specifically and I'd call them up and I'd say, hi, I'm the web developer for this particular client. I'd like you to take a look at the website for me and do a deep dive. I'd like you to take a look at the, the, the demographics here. And I wanna to try to rank this person for what they do. Can you give me some feedback? And I would do whatever they say. Mm. And that's, that's where I would apportion that budget. And the way I look at it is every six months, I would go into a huddle and look at the results. And I would, I would not refer the client, you the lawyer, the business owner, to specific key performance indicators or KPIs because it, they would be nonsensical. What I would do is say, are you getting an uptick in phone calls and emails? Because in a lot of cases, the increase could be coming from the blog posts being indexed. If they're written and programmed correctly, it could be from videos if you're producing regular videos on YouTube right? It could be from other things that you're doing that work in tandem. So we don't always know why you're getting the results that you're getting. We could only, you know, the main thing is, are you getting them? And then over time, you start to see more and more, because a lot of in a lot of cases, these things take a few months to populate. Um, you know, Google doesn't index a website every single day. If you make a change to your website or create a new page, it's not going to show up necessarily in Google search results immediately. Could take several days, could take several weeks. In some cases, I've heard of it taking months. Yeah. And then even if you've done everything right on the technical end, like you were saying, human psychology essentially dictates that it takes seven points of contact uh, before somebody is really ready to make a purchasing decision. Right. And, and, and so the more you do it, you have to see it as a machine. It's a process. It's not an item or a commodity. You're not buying a stack of business cards. You're starting a process that is a service. And a lot of people don't know that because we're so accustomed to a consumerism culture like Burger King. You get, every, get it your way. It's, it's super cheap, immediate. And, you know, and life doesn't work like that. You get out what you put in, in business and in life. Yeah, and in and, and adding to that point, uh, this in many ways is a, an art form rather than a science. Of course, you want to inform all your decisions with as much data as humanly possible. But I mean, I'm sure you've seen this over the course of 20 years. There's probably been campaigns that you were sure were going to go great, and maybe they didn't measure up. And then other campaigns really surprised you um, because, you know, just sometimes people work a little differently than you expect and then you have to load up and... Uh, yeah double down on what was successful, right? <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely. I've had uh, websites that were just shot to number one in Google, like two weeks or so after they went live, I had one go to the top, like, I think it was like three months. Wow. <laughs> and, and, and it just shot to number one in Google. And actually, it was a nonprofit organization, helping veterans. Oh, wow. And it was the same thing. They called me up and said, you got to, you got to delete the website. I'm like, why? What's going on? You're getting emails. I see the, the emails you're receiving. And they said, well, yeah, but we don't have the 501c3 status. We said we did. We're getting <laughs> donations. We don't know what to do. Oh no! People, you know, veterans are calling and asking for help and we don't have the infrastructure to help them. And I just was like, okay, that's fine you know, let me take uh, screenshots of the site. Let me take a video of the work that I did. 
let me run a couple of backups and then just that's fine it, yeah. it's gone it's gone you know and i've had this happen many times where they go to number one and and then they don't want all the phone calls or the emails because they didn't think it was going to happen or they're just not prepared for it which you know i can't really speak to that kind of logic but you know <laughs> That's that's giving them generally very good problems to have. Maybe not in the case of that particular um, uh, veterans organization, but in you know a business uh, that gets too much money coming at it, I, I never feel bad about causing that. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. So um, you know, I I can't really think of that many sites where you would go to bat for them and they don't see some kind of uptick. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Just because if you can do all of the things that you know you should do and can do, and they empower you to do it, very, very seldom are you not going to see some results after a month or two. Yeah. Because I also am a firm believer in incorporating offline, what I call boots on the ground marketing efforts that tie in and complement the online marketing efforts as well. So for the divorce lawyer, mm -hmm. one of the brilliant um, strategies I knew, uh, there was one divorce lawyer I knew in Denver who created a divorce support group on wow. meetup.com. Then he also cross promoted it on Facebook and then uh, local chambers of commerce, he would post it and every place that he could, he would promote this divorce support group a meetup, Facebook, promoted on Twitter, created a website for it, you know, put, you know, city, what was his, his SDO was city, state, divorce support. Mm -hmm. Then he would blog and use the SEO divorce support in city state. So you do that on a regular basis, you're going to start seeing results. <laughs> then he would make, all, then he would start interviewing people and he would call it, divorce support in city state or city state divorce support or divorce options city state city state divorce options and back and forth on and on so after doing that for a few months everybody who was getting divorced was either going to a support group or going to the website then i told him i said you know what i'm going to split your brain in half create a singles group for divorcees call it whatever you want we need to research the seo first divorce singles group <laughs> put it on meetup meetup will let you have three groups in three different cities if you pay for a paid account so that could be denver aurora centennial so and you could create the same group but just put different city listings in it so you can have different zip codes. It could be the exact same group or you just change the call one Denver divorce support group. Yeah. Call the other one, Aurora divorce support group, and then call the other one Centennial. So use complimentary SEO, but otherwise they're all the exact same. Different people are going to join from all over. Now you've got three divorce support groups that are really the same. They all point to the same location, the same date, the same time, right? And then you open another account, pay what they need you to pay, do the same thing with a singles group. So now once a week, you have a divorce support group. Then after that, you have a divorce singles group. Well, he's combing divorced people out of his hair every day he's going through them and they're all asking him for advice and all kinds of problems they're having and he could partner with a psychologist or whatever or a therapist and they could work out some kind of referral plan or something and they've got a well-oiled machine running now you tie that into your website in the videos in a podcast where you could interview the people mm -hmm. wow. i don't know if that'd be a conflict of interest or not but you find a way to work it out so that you can legally and, you know, and ethically do all of that. Now you've got a money making machine. Wow. So imagine doing that for any type of business. If you're a struggling restaurant owner, 
I mean, come on, you have a restaurant, video record uh, recipes, video record cooking demonstrations, have cooking classes where they're socially distanced and they're wearing masks, produce videos, write a, a cookbook, sell, I mean, do everything that you can think of and just put it all together and then prioritize it, you know, and organize it and get help because you can't do it all yourself. So get help. Now you've got a marketing machine that you've just created. Meetup will let you have webinars. So you could be doing cooking webinars, cooking classes, have recipes on YouTube, create a recipe cooking channel. You could be blogging a different recipe every day. Yeah, you know, exactly. You I mean, if be, I if participate in a uh, webinar for you know, some dessert, I'm going to go to that <laughs> restaurant to get that dessert eventually. Right. Right. Use your website to use e-commerce so you can offer home delivery, partner with Uber or whatever, and offer delivery. Come yeah. on, yeah. get with the program. <laughs> and I mean, you know, every blog post should have a video and a podcast. Imagine each podcast episode being a different recipe. Yeah, that's fantastic. Or, you know, so for everything that you do, you can create a marketing machine just like that and have everything going through the website. And that's how you get the machine rolling along. And now if you do that for several months, you can't be held back because your smaller competitors won't do it. They'll be too cheap or too broke or too poor or too confused or too stuck with DIY. It's not right. I shouldn't have to do this. You don't know my pain, my drama. They're going to be so caught up in that <laughs> that they can't get to go. They can never get to giddy up, as they say. And your larger competitors who are making more money, they can't pivot. And that's how you can compete with them. Uh, similar to how I was able to outrank multi-million dollar marketing agencies in Denver. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the marketing uh, money that they did. I didn't have the uh, money to invest in PPC. I didn't. But I could rank number one in Google. And it lasted for several weeks. And during that time, before they caught on and the algorithms adapted or they started spending more and just, uh, uh, you know, squashing me, Bef that several week period was enough for me to onboard a lot of clients. I mean, it was several weeks was like 30 new leads, which was well worth the effort, huh. you know? And then you wait a couple of months and try it again. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, and David, on that note, I, uh, I'd like to wrap things up. I'm so grateful for you for taking the time and being so generous uh, with sharing your knowledge. Um, this is certainly talking to you has certainly lit a fire up under me to take it to the next level and try and identify and uh, snuff out some blind spots that I might have and just, you know, take my game to the next level. Um, you are currently working on a project where you're appearing on several podcasts. Is that correct? Um, I, I enjoy being a podcast guest. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to see if I can be a podcast guest on 50 podcasts um, within the next month. So far, I've been on, I think, 32, 33. But it's mainly for fun. I mean, obviously, it's there's no harm in me getting my name out there because if I can legitimately help one business owner knock it out of the park and turn them around, then it's great. If I could take one business and take them from, you know, economic failure to reinvesting profits, then that's great. Um, so I'm working on that. Um, and I also have my own business website, which is www.dms.blue. It's my initials, David Martin Summerfleck. I'm a digital marketing specialist. So it's dms.blue. Um, and anybody who's really serious and committed uh, about turning their business around can schedule a free consultation with me to see if we're a good fit for each other. If we are a good fit, then we go through the onboarding process that I described earlier. Fantastic. Well, David, uh, thank you so much for your time, for coming on, for sharing so many brilliant strategies. I look forward to hearing your voice more in the podcast sphere. And um, yeah, just thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. 
absolutely. Thank you for having me, West. I had uh, a lot of fun talking to you. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. Uh, and uh, you can catch us on, you know, iTunes, um, everywhere you can get your podcasts. And uh, thank you so much for listening. All right. Bye bye.